Time on the Lazy Geckos. We take you along with us as we complete the survey and sea trial of our new island hopping home. We also finish gathering all the items we need to move aboard. And then we start the first few projects that we have to make our boat home. Yeah, we, we were originally going to post a video about the first night, but when we watched it, it was quite boring and you couldn't really see much because the camera wasn't picking up very much light. Um, um, Let's talk about um, the boxes. Um. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I say editing. Um too much. Editing. We will say um too much. I and really during do. the editing, I try to cut it out, and as you watch, you might see like glitch, 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 glitch. Usually because there's an um right there. I'm working on it. So, so anyway, um. boxes. <laughs> we, the last couple of years, we've been slowly packing. So uh, if you've been following our journey, we've been going from a house to a small apartment to a furnished house and now to the boat. So slowly we've been, you know, getting rid of our, getting, getting rid of our things, but that means we have to prioritize. So there were things that we wanted to keep. Obviously, you know, say, so, hey, you know what, this would work on the boat, like my Scrabble game that Brittany just threw out. But anyway, <laughs> so, because uh, it was too big. And it, it was this really awesome big. Scrabble game, man. It this is, thing, but... it would fit on the table, and it's like a hard shell Scrabble game that has little fitted spots for the squares, and it can spin. But the problem is that it's so bulky it is. that. Yeah, it's hard to fit it somewhere, but I don't even really play Scrabble, but if it, I figure on the boat we could probably make this work, but uh, we'd probably play it sometime. So, it's raining today. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it's raining, and if you can hear it, I'm sorry. Please don't comment about how you can hear the rain. I can't stop the rain from coming down. Maybe I can muffle the, the boat with some foam or something. You better do something because <laughs> you just anyway. need to make that happen. Yeah, we got some critics. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, what the hell was I talking about? The Scrabble game. Oh yeah, so nice. anyway, after years of having the Scrabble game and being excited about bringing it on the boat, I go outside and the damn thing's sitting <laughs> in the rain. It's made of cardboard. And I'm like, are you ruining my Scrabble game? It's upside down in the rain, so it's like a bowl just collecting <laughs> rain. So she's like, no. Well, at least your carpet didn't fall in the water in the morning. Yeah, so today, not to get off subject about packing to get here, uh, Brittany yells in, my carpet's in the water. She had her carpet out there. I don't know if it was hanging on the, out on the rail to dry, the lifeline. No, well, I've been cleaning all day long. Finally, I'm done. But I was going out there to, like, sweep off the carpet. And I, like, went over to go in the water. And I started to sweep, and I just, like, let go. The carpet. <laughs> I was pouring rain. So, so the carpet's floating off into the, the harbor. And I'm trying to get it with like a hook, and the hook's not long enough. So I, I'm trying to search for like a line to use. I think I used a good line and put it in the crap water that everybody pees and poops in, I'm sure. I'm like, 
swing in, you know, yeah. it's pouring rain. But. I got into, uh, when we were down there with that O'Day 40, I got into the water oh. to try to check out the bottom of the boat, which I couldn't see at all because it was so murky. But I would tell you that that water had a taste like no other, man. Oh. So you know that people just had their toilets going straight out of the boat. You know they do. So I'm sure that's what I was smelling and tasting for like <laughs> three days after I went in that water. So here's our dog ramp. I am gonna try it out or show you guys exactly what we were doing with it. Jeremiah just finished it up. So this is the area that it sits in, which is very convenient. It's right here. And then he just finished putting the little boards on the bottom or I don't know what you call it. Brackets. Brackets. To fit perfectly on here. There's one, and here is the other one. So now it's in there, nice and snug. Can't move it. The only thing is, is it slides this way a little bit, but we will always be here helping the dogs along. Uh, and the dogs will be trying it out probably here shortly. We've been leaving them at home when we come to the boat just so we can get things done and get it ready, and they'll come as soon as it's, you know, perfect. But you did a wonderful job, honey. I'm very proud of you. I think we might add some grip tape. Grip tape along here, like some of our um, friends suggested. The way that the dogs will get to and from here, this table right here, sorry it's a mess, um, goes down, and then the dogs. There is also a cushion that comes out if we wanted to make it easier. And I'm pretty sure the Bulldogs will eventually go. I've been working with them when I count one, two, three. That's when they jump. Takori's pretty good at it, actually. Bella is not, but she doesn't matter because we can just <laughs> lift her out. But they will come right here. Hey, hey you, hush. They'll come right here and we'll either lift them up and walk along with them or, you know, have their leash and go straight up. Voila. Beautiful. You did wonderfully, honey. Thank you. I'm very proud of you. Anyway, the boat boxes, so we prioritized yeah. and we had a bunch of boat boxes. So we're pretty much almost done with the yard sales. First time we brought like six, then we brought like three or something like that. It has the so storage. much storage. It's yeah. unreal. Like in the cabinet, in the bathroom, you slide it across and it's like this through. Yeah. Through it. It's all back here, like behind these shelves, which are already probably like yeah. that deep. Some of these shelves, especially up with the V berth, you could, I can take my arm and reach all the way back and I can't even get to the hall. It is that deep. It's bumpy. Tell us what you're doing. Well, my helper and I, over here, are measuring the um, V-Birth. This little cubby area right now, they have some not very permanent little nettings to hold stuff. What I would like to do is buy some material from Sailrite and put snaps up along here and snaps down here all the way across and it looks to be 14 inches high and 74 inches wide on both sides so we'll have that much space to use for storage for things like um, bathing suits, socks, underwear, bras, that type of thing. And that'll hold a lot of our miscellaneous stuff otherwise we have these for our clothes, all of our clothing and we're trying to create more space to put Reese's clothes somewhere as well. And that's what we're doing. I got my help over here. Yeah. He's measuring. Say hi. Say hello. <laughs> Can I kiss? Three. Mwah. Thank you. Mwah. Oh, mwah. Mwah. Lots of kisses. Oh, bang, bang. Now I'm going to go attempt to make it. <laughs> Should be fine. I have no idea what I'm doing. 
God really blessed us and gave us exactly what he knew we needed. All right, so first problem on the boat. This is a weird one, okay? And a, it was a really lucky one, too. First night on the boat, we smell a strange smell. Like, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's nothing. So it smells like, you know, fuel. Okay, this boat doesn't smell at all. It doesn't have that holding tank smell that you smell. There's zero smell in this boat. It's because Reese was sleeping in the Bieber, we brushed our teeth in the galley, and the water smelled like fuel. Like, I was like, does this smell like fuel to you? So I'm filling up glass, but I'm brushing my teeth to the sink. It smells like fuel. I'm like, I put water in there. I'm like, does that smell like fuel? That what's smells that? like what's that whiskey. smell like? <laughs> whiskey. That's right. So, uh, yeah, anyway, so I'm like, I swear this smells like fuel. She's like, yeah, I think so too. I look around, I don't see anything. You know, I'm like, all right, well, man, I hope it's not like a leak or something. I hope that the tank isn't, the diesel tank isn't leaking. So I'm like, I don't know, man. So I spent the night awake thinking about this thing. Like, I wasn't what, worried what about a thing. Do? You know, what What could it be, whatever. Next day I get up and I look in the galley and the sink and up to the brim is fuel, like green fuel. So I take a spoon, I dip it down in there, put it in a glass, smell it, it smells like fuel. I can't really tell what kind of, kind of fuel, but it's, it could be diesel, I don't know. I'm like, holy crap, you know, why is there diesel coming up through the sink, right? So I call the previous owners and they're like, what? That makes no sense whatsoever. You know, they're like, that does not have a, a leak. And if it did have a leak, there's no way it would get into the tank and all this stuff, you know. I don't know why it's coming up the sink, you know. So I started looking around. I'm trying to frantically look for the problem here. I'm down underneath, with behind the engine, looking for whatever. Long story short, I go up top and there is a, we have some fuel cans up along the rail. And one of them has two stroke oil in it and fuel for the outboard. Well, a pin, I pick it up and there's a pinhole, little pinhole that is just pissing out. And then it's running down the tow rail, right? And it goes down into a drain. And the drain is hooked up to a drain in the, in the cockpit and also this, the galley sink. Obviously you don't want to dump fuel into a harbor. That's you get big fines for that, you know, and, uh, you know, highly illegal. Well, the cool thing is it had not leaked out into the harbor at all because the whole system had been clogged up. So I was able to suck, I got the little oil sucker, and I was able to suck all the fuel out of the system and then clear the system with a snake, get it all cleared out and everything. So that was our first lesson. So if you ever have two stroke oil coming up through your sink. It might just It be. might be coming from some fuel, crappy, brand new fuel tank. Yeah. Yeah, it was brand new. It was like a fluke. The guy, the, uh, the previous owner, filled it up for me. He's like, hey man, you know, I, I filled that up for you. Put some new two stroke oil in it, you know. It's just a brand new tank, you know. So we were really fortunate that it didn't leak out into the water. We are right in the middle of creating a safe and functional home for all of our babies. So one of our many projects that we have begun is putting lifeline netting around all sides of the boat to ensure that our dogs and baby will be kept inside. We will be getting our material from Sailrite as we have found their products to be of great quality. So let's talk about our first day of sailing. <sighs> sailing, I'll tell you, you know, neither one of us have a lot of experience when it comes to sailing. Did a little bit here and there. But nothing like where I was in, I had any type of responsibility whatsoever. Like full control. I mean, I'm starting to get it, but you know, I understand how the sails and the rigging work, but I just don't understand how you work the sails with the wind in the direction. Yeah, that makes sense. You know? Yeah, it's hard to figure out. It is. I'm yeah. so happy that you know. I don't know, <laughs> but we, we did it. I, I know we a little bit. We I know, did do it. I know enough to be able to sail easily, like downwind, like we did.
Okay, so we're a little nervous to kill the engine. <laughs> why? Why are you so nervous? Well, there's a pylon over here, and I just don't want to not have engine power. But I'm used to having an engine. All right, all right, let's do it. You ready? Oh my gosh! Okay. Oh my gosh, we're sailing. We're sailing. First Cruising. time. First time. 3.4 knots right now with our Genoa. I had no idea when I woke up this morning that we'd be sailing. Wow. The winds are like, they're very light. So that's why we're out here, because they're very light. <laughs> right, but yeah, we wanted to get the Genoa. We're not gonna put the mainsail up today. But uh here we've done a nice little downwind sail up the St. John's River. Yeah. Wanna drive? No. <laughs> Our first sail couldn't have been more perfect and it really made us appreciate all of our supporters because without you guys creating and sharing all of these awesome videos wouldn't be possible. This week we would like to welcome Jericho and Arthur to the Patreon family. And thank you to our new friends, Gary and Sean, for buying us some yummy sundowners via PayPal. We greatly appreciate everyone's support in making our dreams come true. Are you I keep trying to record and you Sorry. keep interrupting me. <laughs> oh. Anyway, um, okay. We were supposed to go out on Monday to go sailing and we didn't get here in time. We had some things happen with one of our dogs. And then um, yesterday we were supposed to go, but we totally wimped out. So this morning we woke up and we were like, hey, let's go. That's why I look like a little hot mess, see my hair, it's crazy. I haven't even taken my retainers out yet. But hey, we're out here, it's calm, it was perfect, so why not? and we are now out. We were just going to come out and motor around and then my husband um, threw a bag of bricks at me and wanted to raise the Genoa. Yeah, so now we're two for two. <laughs> Moving a rather quickly for me if you ask, but oh well. Anyways, we're out here and I already learned a lot in this short amount of time. We actually had a girl come over my age and she was like, crazy story, my friend emailed me and was like, hey, look at these people, they're in Florida, you'll probably run into them, us. She was talking about us. And she's like, no way, I just met them. So that was really cool. Um, that was our first encounter of being like recognized. So pretty neat. Uh, and then she helped me. Her name is Kim. So if you're that friend out there watching, let her know that I am thanking her. She gave me some great tips, some great pointers. Um, I really appreciate it. I learned how to walk the boat out off the dock. Uh, so that was nice. She let me know not to, well her suggestion, you know, that works for her was she takes the middle line and throws the bow and the um, end line, I'm not sure what it's called, <laughs> in the boat or you know at the dock however you want to do it and she controls the boat with the middle line so I took her suggestion, it worked well, she helped us, really appreciate it, um, so that was cool, nice girl. Anyways, we'll check in later, we're gonna go make some coffee. You know, I'm so open to suggestions since I'm new at this you know, to say the least, and um, she was telling me, you know, if it was her, how she would take out the boat, because what we're, what we're trying to do is put me working the lines when mm -hmm. we dock, and then also when we take off from the marina, and he is in charge of the steering and you know, all that good stuff. I'm the captain, you know? Yeah. So, so um, she was giving me her suggestions. She helped us out. Awesome. You know, we're going to get together later week or maybe next week and have some drinks hopefully and get some more tips. Reese is uh, taking a nap back here but we have this little 
little thing I have to put a stern line on. We didn't, we tied off the boat before I put it on, so this is twice that I've had to lasso the uh, stern line on. So going back to my bronc riding days, I'm gonna go ahead and lasso it up. Might not be, might not be as good as uh, our Texas friends down there, but we'll see how it goes. Reese is sleeping, so we gotta stay quiet. He's chilling out in the back of the cellar. Never mind, he just woke up. Hey, little man. You wanna help me lasso? Say hi. Say hi. How many tries is it gonna take? One time after editing. Oh. Okay. Do whatever you did last time. I'm gonna take a seat. How many tries did it take you last time? Oh, Mo. I think we're on like seven. Yes. How many tries did it take you, honey? Uh, like two, I think. Oh, okay. That's hard. Next time we need to do that. Before we come in? As we're coming. Well, like before we tie off. So when we came in from sailing, um, I know you guys probably don't know this, but I have a huge fear of what's in the, I love the water. I've always loved the water. Boating, staying on a boat for long periods of time. Granted, I've never lived on a boat. Yeah! Get some Reese! Yes! Yeah! Woohoo! Are you ready to get this thing moving? Is that deep over there, honey? I can't touch it. This is my first time, but I've always loved it. That lifestyle, totally me. However, I do have this huge fear of what is in the water. I don't know why I've never been able to kick it. So anyways, Jeremiah tells me to stand on the outside of the lifelines um, because I'm going to have to jump off onto the dock with the lines to help guide the boat. And I'm panicking. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> I was panicking as well. I will tell you, I've driven a lot of power boats and I, I've owned boats in the past. This is completely different. <laughs> There, you know, first off, it's like kind of like a jet ski. Like you have no steering control unless you are moving. Mm -hmm. So a jet ski, you don't have steering control unless you're giving it gas. Well, here, unless you are powering forward, you do not have any steering control. Not only that, when you reverse, the boat doesn't just go backwards; it turns. Yeah. Because of the way the, the propeller works. So it's not like a power boat if you've driven one, where if you know you can you can just bring it in kick it over, throw it reverse, and back it right over to the dock, whatever. Well, when you reverse a sailboat, because the way that the prop works, uh, the boat yaws. So basically, you know, if the boat's here, and you go reverse, our boat yaws to the starboard. So it goes like this. Okay? So when you're trying to come in and dock uh, into a little slip, first off, you have to be moving quickly forward, pretty, you know, a knot, two knots, forward, and then get it straight enough or whatever, we're getting the position you want it, plus the current's pushing you and the wind's pushing you, you gotta come in and then pop it in reverse to stop the freaking thing and also realize that when you reverse it, it's not just gonna stop, it's gonna be turning. Yeah, so, so we really have, you know, a lot of like yeah. short-term stress on us and we're coming into the marina and Kim, you can see her and she's, she's like, getting on her, She's getting on her bike. She's to like, come help us. you need help? Because they're down the marina. It's, it's like a long dock. It's an old World War II naval dock where they used to disassemble battleships and they're along the dock 
And uh, she's getting on her bike. She's like, "You need help?" And Brittany's like, "No, I think we'll be fine." I'm like, and I was no, like, "We're good." And then right okay. after I say that, he starts like frantically yelling at me. I'm not yelling. I'm well, just, like, I was extending my voice. Okay. <laughs> and then it throws me into panic mode. You know. <laughs> You're already. She was already in panic mode because she was. And you know, death's oh, so grip much. by standing outside the lifelines. Thankfully, we had um, two people at our slip seeing us coming because they all know that we're hey, first here timers. Comes, here comes the new idiots. They're coming in. Watch out. So they all came over. They're waiting for a big crash. But you know what? It was beautiful. We stuck it. Yeah, we did yeah. so amazing. It was like. I don't know if we'll ever do that again. No. I am so happy. Well, I'm kind of happy that we did so well because it's like, okay, the new idiots on the block aren't complete idiots, <laughs> whatever. But also, now we have to live up to that standard every time. It was perfect. It was. It was like, uh, uh, uh. We were so proud of yeah. ourselves. It was so good. But I started drinking immediately afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't stopped. It's been two days. <laughs> what are you doing over there? I'm measuring out. Reese's new bedroom. How's it working? It's good. Give us an idea of what you're gonna do. Uh, well, all the, we got some electronics back here that we want to keep out of his reach and uh, make it pretty much impossible for him to uh, get into. Um, also, we have to make sure it can continue to cool. This is our inverter, a thousand watt inverter. Um, and then another thing is I have engine access back here. So I want to be able to get into that too. So while giving him, you know, as much space as we can get. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put up a wall right here, a very light panel, like a panel that will go all the way back. It's gonna be slotted. There's gonna be a little rib back there. I'm gonna slot it so the panel will just fit in the rib. And I'm gonna mount it on here so that you can just easily remove it. And that's gonna become storage, a little storage area all the way back until the panel to get to the engine. And it'll be, I want it to be able to get off real quick if we have to. And then on top of, and then up here, I'm gonna go ahead and enclose with a piece of wood, all this right here. So this is gonna be like a little cubby for his feet to slip underneath right here. And that's gonna be low enough so that the inverter can still breathe. Um, and it will also allow us to have some storage still because this will become a shelf all the way up to here. All the way across, all the way back. Uh, it's going to be all padded underneath and in the front. And then up here, I'm going to have mesh. So it's going to be mesh that you can unsnap fairly easily. So when you look in here, you're going to see just a, a padded piece of wood and then snapped mesh real night, nicely, firmly snapped in there. And you'll be able to put some stuff in there, which will allow the inverter to continue to breathe. Um, and then this would be his area for his head, and then this bed actually continues out into the navigation station. But we'll see. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and wrap this area up, and then this will become his his bed, because right now he's sleeping in the V-Bird, which is where we're supposed to be sleeping. Yeah, we're sleeping on the settee. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm taking all the measurements now, and then we'll be going to uh, get all the materials and work on it this week, and then we'll film more about it. All right, we'll show them the finished product, huh? <laughs> yes, we. <laughs> so, whatever. Uh, yeah, so that was that was our first sailing experience. It was wonderful. But we weren't going up when we were going downwind, but we were trying to change. It was basically like a tack. I can't remember what the hell that's okay. called. Okay, so I'm like, can you do it alone? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, are yeah. you sure? Got it. Okay, well, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing then. And then all of a sudden, I'm pouring milk into the bowl. And he's like, you should be up here. And I'm like, oh my god. I need effing help. <laughs> so I dropped the milk because I think we're in like a, a state of emergency yeah. and I run up there and I'm start helping him and we figured out what, what was going wrong, you know, and to say the least, wrong, the I was very annoyed because I had asked him if he needed help yeah. before I started pouring the milk 
and yeah. he said he didn't. I and didn't. then I had to throw I'm the I'm always going to say I don't need help. I'm going to say no, I don't need any damn help. Typical man. So lesson learned, I'm just going to go up there and help him. I'm not going to worry about Yeah, this. that'd be good. We'll be prepping to go to the Miami Boat Show next weekend. Yeah. Well, first off, we're going to go to the boat show just have a good time. We're going to walk around. Hopefully, we'll see some people. We'll be all over Facebook, Instagram, saying, hey, you know, come see us at 6 o'clock on the night of the 13th. We're all going to have a meet and greet. Yay! One of our Patreons is basically putting this great thing together, and we're all going to get together and meet a bunch of people that watch our videos, and we're excited about that. We can't wait to meet all you guys, share some drinks, stories, have a great time. <laughs> Um, so we're going to meet at like a family friendly pub, um, it'll be a good time, oh we'll yeah. hang out. And you guys get happy hour specials. Everybody gets happy hour specials. Yeah. That's a good thing. Oh yes, as long as you're there, there's no time limit yep. from what I understand. Yep. That's exciting. We just want to say thank you to Lyle and Cheryl and Trace for putting everything together. You know, we had one of our, like I said, one of our patrons on Patreon uh, really came through and uh, has done a lot, so we really appreciate that. And we're looking forward to getting together for sure. I guess we're ready to wrap this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it um, and our little clips that we're going to throw in there. Cheers! Can't say cheers. Why? That's, that's your list thing. Oh, well, somebody said to me today, Should I go tell them they can't tell me that? Yeah, no, they can't. That's your list thing. Okay. They say cheers at the end of every video next time on Lazy Geckos. I'm yeah. going to be in a bikini and naked on the boat. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's how it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Oh, and besides that, we give you guys more information concerning our future plans. But most importantly, we bring you along with us during our many upcoming boat projects that we just happen to keep stumbling upon make sure to come check us out at the Miami Boat Show, February 12th and 13th. If you'd like to attend the meet and greet on February 13th at 6 p.m. at this awesome little pub, then please RSVP to the address listed and we will make sure you have a spot with us.